Hey Grace Posse, welcome back to the Daily Devotion. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to talk about the resurrection thriller. I remember years ago watching watching the boxing match, the, the thriller in Manila. The float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. But today we're going to talk about the resurrection thriller. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our right, Heavenly Father, we want to come and see for ourselves what happened at that tomb. Give us a new insights into the truth about your resurrection. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, we're going to be in Matthew 28, 1 through 20. Matthew 28, 1 through 20. And I ask that you go read this passage for yourselves and come back for the reflection time. So how can we reflect upon this passage that we read today? I love good spy movies. I love thrillers. I love trying to figure things out as we begin to watch a movie or something. Uh, I heard somebody talk about they would read these type of books before they went to bed. And when pedaling on their, the, this pastor Wood on his, his exercise bike at the, at the YMCA, one of the things that appeals to this pattern would appeal to this pastor uh, in these kind of books is that the short chapters they would intertwine several plot lines that all come together in the end that's exactly how Matthew constructed his account of the resurrection of Jesus plot number one the basic story we see in one through seven Matthew begins to with a summary of the facts told in a meticulous detail Note that the earthquake was violent. No wonder the guards were scared stiff. The angel had a dazzling appearance, but assumed a casual position, sitting on a stone. It's as if to say, what's the big deal? Jesus told you this would happen, right? Plot number two, the two Marys. As we see in verses 1 and then verses 5 through 10, the two Marys were overwhelmed with conflicting emotions, fear and joy. Even so, the angel gives them a threefold command. Don't be afraid. Come and see and go and tell. Good marching orders for any follower of Jesus. For the two Marys, it led to a life-changing encounter with Jesus. And that's what every encounter with Jesus should do for each of us as followers of Jesus. A life-changing encounter. Plot number three. The bad guys. The religious leaders, uh, aware of the disastrous public relations implications, if the word gets out that Jesus actually did rise from the dead, pay the guards to spread misinformation about what happened. Sadly, there are still people today who reject Jesus because they haven't heard the truth about him. So then that brings us to plot number four. The motivational conclusion, as we see in verses 16 through 20. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 is often called the Great Commission. Because in these verses, Jesus empowered his followers to share the good news of the gospel with the whole world. But the most inspirational aspect of the Great Commission is not a vision of worldwide evangelism, but rather it's the reality that Jesus will be with His followers forever. So how can we apply this to us today? Do you ever feel that Jesus is with you? When? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the empty tomb. Help us to overcome our fears so we can go and tell others about your Son, Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. And I'll see you next time.